Hi, I'm Brian Hale, pastor of New Horizons Community Church here in Skowhegan, Maine. I'm so glad you joined us today. We're in our third sermon from our series called From This Day Forward. Grab your Bible, and if you have a friend with you that is your partner, your wife, your husband, grab them and have them come join you. This is a message for couples and for those that hope to be a couple someday. So if you're single and watching, don't go away. I promise this is going to be very helpful to you. Hey, I want to welcome you to our third week of the series called From This Day Forward. Um, I want to welcome all those watching online. We are live today again. We're doing more and more work to improve what goes on in the tech booth. And I just want to thank our tech team for all the work that they do. Um, and they do a lot of work. And they could always use another hand. From this day forward, now if you weren't paying attention from this, uh, for this message uh, when I mentioned it last week, this week it's going to be rated PG. Okay, we're going to talk about having fun. Now if you missed the last couple of weeks, I want to review. We are keeping five commitments that we believe will impact our marriages. So if you missed last week, everybody join in. Uh, what did we talk about? We talked about how we are going to seek God. Okay. I need everyone to join me with this. If you guys don't join me with this, it's not going to be fun. Uh, remember, we, we talked about seeking God. We will seek the one with our two, right? Do you remember that? We seek God with our spouse. We pray together. We pray together. And in our marriage, we do pray. And some of you started off praying, and then you started praying, and some of you already, you kind of been distracted. Can I just encourage you by saying, pray, pray, pray? You remember my story from two weeks ago? Never stop flossing, right? Don't stop flossing. Keep praying. We seek God. And last week we talked about, say it out loud, everybody, we talked about how to fight fair. Fight fair. Keep up with me now. Fight fair. Honestly, I would love for each of you to internalize last week's message because quite honestly, some of us don't fight fair. We don't. And we need to. By now it should be available online. Is it not online, tech team, last week's message? It's not yet. It will be this week. Okay. But you'll find it on our website, on YouTube, and on Facebook. And my hope is that maybe by this time next week, you'll have listened to the sermon a couple of times, and it'll, you'll make it literally part of your lives. And today we're going to talk about how to have fun. Now, next week we're going to talk about staying pure, and finally we're going to talk about how to never give up. Now, I need all of you across the worship center to help me with these, if you would, please. We're going to say them out loud, and I want you to say them with passion, because this needs to be a march, of, uh, a marching order for each of us, whether we're married or we hope to be married someday. Uh, and listen, if we don't say it without passion and volume, well, I'll just make you do it till we get it right, okay? So, work with me. What are we going to do? We are going to? All right, now, we're going to also? Okay, and we are, we're going to talk about today about having to? And we're going to, and we're never, ever, we're never going to give up. So, what's that, Aaron? Yes, right. Never quote the pastor. You know how many people have walked up to me, said they've quoted me, just out of fun? Pastor's dead. All right. Don't quote the pastor. We were clear on this. So today I want to talk to you about having fun in your marriage because so often people don't have fun in their marriages. In fact, I'll give you a couple of quotes uh, that I'm going to read from what I found online. One quote said, a man doesn't know what happiness is until he gets married, and by then it's way too late to do anything about it. <laughs> right now the women are like, yeah, that's kind of sad, kind of harsh. Ladies, if that offended you, this should uh, kind of level the playing field. If a man says that his wife can't take a joke, she needs to remember that she married him, and he's a really big joke. Come on, don't give me that pathetic little sympathy laughter. Let's have some fun. Come on, you got to have some fun. If not, you don't belong here. You got to have some fun. Shouldn't be here at all. Hello. Come on. So in our marriages, unfortunately, too often, there are couples that have a lot of fun when they're dating, but then they get married, and what happens is life kind of happens and they stop enjoying each other. And I want to submit to you that God really takes delight in the blessings of marriage. He does. In fact, I want to read to you Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9. 
and we'll start in the New Living Translation, and then I'll show it to you in the New International Version. The Bible says to live how? Everybody across the worship center, is it on here, guys? Uh-oh, did we freeze? Oh, there it is. Okay, I was a little concerned. All right. It says, say it out loud, to live happy with the woman you, okay. Through all the meaningless, I'll read it with you again, through all the meaningless days of life that God has given you under the sun. In other words, guys, there are going to be days where you just, you wake up, you take a shower, you go to work, you go home, and it's just meaningless. But a blessing is to live happily with the woman you love. Do you know that? It goes on to say, the wife God gives you. So what is she? She should be your reward for all your earthly toil. Hmm? Live happily with the wife. She is a reward. Now the NIV says to enjoy life with your wife whom you love. Enjoy life with your wife who you love. I think that's great, don't you? Don't you? I do. I do. In, in fact, uh, I would say without fun, without adventure, without romance, without physical intimacy, marriage is often just reduced to a, to a business relationship. It's like a partnership. It's like two roommates living under the same roof, yet living two entirely different lives. The communication simply, simply becomes about business. You know, uh, you do this, I'll cover this, I'll cover that, you cover this. And what's interesting is people don't fall in love having a bad time, do they? Do they? Huh? How often do you hear of somebody that falls in love with someone say that they're totally bored with? Have you ever heard a young woman say, oh man, this guy, he's just awesome? I mean, when we get together, we have nothing in common. And all we do is we just sit there and say nothing. And occasionally I watch him with his video games and he just kind of veges out on the couch and he's so dull and boring. <laughs> Such a turn on. You don't hear that, do you? Huh? What you hear is, oh my gosh, we have so much in common and we have so much fun together. And it is in the dating life that it takes place or we wouldn't get married that we have this attraction. But then you get married. And some people lose all the adventure and all the fun. Men, men, do you remember planning dates? Women, do you? Do you remember planning? Do you remember planning dates and then anticipating the date and then fondly remembering that date? I do. I remember my first date with Karen. There was this, this is all side note. Our first date, well, our first get-together was me hauling a washing machine into her house. She needed someone to do that. She found somebody big. But our first date together was to go see the musical Scrooge. And it was at this organ theater in Michigan. And it had this beautiful pipe organ that still played music during the intermission. And we were the youngest couple there. And then the following Christmas, um, she gave to me an ornament that was a little Bob Cratchit. Okay, you see how you remember those things? Aren't they great? Aren't they great? Bob Cratchit was made in probably China. Okay, but it means so much to me. And you, you make those dates. And there was so much fun that went into these dates. But let me tell you what happens. So often, men, I'm talking to you, we pursue a woman. Men, before we get married. But then we get married. And then do you know what men often do? We go off to pursue other things. Why? because we're hunters. We like to hunt. We like to conquer. We like to kill. We like to win, don't we, you competitive guys? And it's all, it's all about you go out, you shoot the deer, right? And what do you do? You roar like you do that stuff and you deer. And then you stuff the deer, you put it on the, on the wall, and you say, roar, let's go kill something else, right? And you do that with your girlfriend, you know that? You're like, her, and then you'll marriage, and then you stuff her, and you put her on the wall, and you go, now I'm going to go out, and I'm going to kill something else. It's funny, but it's true. 
And you do the work in the beginning. And then you get married. And then quickly, everything kind of falls apart. It doesn't have to be that way. In fact, I would submit to you that fun is not a luxury in a marriage. Fun is not a luxury in a marriage. Now you may say, but we don't have time for fun. Can I tell you something? You don't have time not to have fun. You don't have time not to have fun in your marriage. One day, you may not have a marriage. So what I want to do is I want to give you three types of fun that every couple should have, all right? And just for the record, I happen to think these three points are, are really, really fun. And if you disagree and say they're cheesy, that's fine. I will say that you'll remember them, and that means they're very effective, okay? So let's look at the three types of fun that every married couple should have. And the first one is what I call face-to-face -face fun. Everyone look at each other and say, face-to-face -face fun. Some people didn't do it. Everyone look at somebody and say, face-to-face -face fun. Face-to-face -face fun. That's where we get together. That's where we enjoy each other's face-to-face -face company. Because so often, couples dating, you know what they do? They talk and they talk and they talk for hours, don't they? Huh? And then they get on the phone and they talk and they talk and then they'll, they'll get off the phone and then they'll text for hours. That's for the young people. They, you can do that with a phone now, you old people. Okay? And I've heard of couples that talk and talk till like 2 in the morning, and then when they run out of things to say, I remember seeing this on my brother one time. He was laying on, on the floor because back years ago, they had these things called phones on the wall, and it had this cord, okay? And he was laying on the floor in the kitchen, and his head was on the floor, and, and he just had the phone resting on his ear, and he was just listening to his girlfriend, uh, just, just breathe. Just breathe, okay? Not heavy breathing, none of that inappropriate breathing stuff. Just They just wanted to hear each other breathe. Isn't that creepy? They just wanted to talk and talk and talk. And then, then they get married. And all this face-to-face -face time ends up being business time. Who's going to get the kids? And who's going to get them from soccer? And you've got to get her to dance. And you know, we've got to get the oil changed in the car. And oh my gosh, we're out of milk again. And you know, the air conditioner broke down and it's all this other type of communication. It's not face to face, it's not intimate, and it's not working. It's not working. We need to have our face to face time. So I want to show you three different portions of scripture that Solomon wrote when, between Solomon and the Shulamite woman. We don't know her name. She's in the book of Song of Solomon, which is a really cool book, all right? And we'll see how their relationship progressed of these different types of fun. The first illustrates the face-to-face -face fun, and it's found in chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. And watch how Solomon compliments her, starting at her feet, and romantically works all the way up her entire body until she's looking in her eyes and she is totally his. Watch this. She says, oh, be oh, beautiful. How beautiful are your sandaled feet, O oh, prince's daughter. Your graceful legs are like jewels, the work of a craftsman's hands. Huh? 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 Some of you guys are taking notes for the very first time. This is good stuff, isn't it? Watch him. He says, your navel is a rounded goblet that never lacks blended wine. I don't understand that part, but I'm sure it worked for her, okay? Your waist is a mound of wheat encircled by lilies. Verse 3, he says, your breasts, pastor said breast, it's in the Bible. <laughs> your breasts are like two fawns twins of a gazelle. Evidently, he's really excited that there are two of them <laughs> and that they're twins. They're twins, okay? And they're both there. Now, just for the record, I've got like 14 different funny things I could say right now, and I'd love to share them with you. But because I'm maturing, maturing in all things of God, I won't say them now. But if you want to talk to me later, 
I'll share them with you because I'm telling you right now, they're really, really funny. Twins. Okay, uh, because your breasts are like, ah, twins, yes, two of them. And then he says, your neck is like an ivory tower and your eyes are the pool of Heshbon at the gate of Bath Rabim. What is he doing? He's talking to her intimately face to face. And what is he doing? Guys, what is he doing? He's giving details. No, he's giving details. Men, right now, say the word details. details. Yes. Do you know why? Because men like headlines. They do. And women like what? Women like details. They want to talk and talk and talk and talk, and that's fine. All right? And sometimes they want to talk about things that you don't care to talk about, and they go on and on. I understand that. But it's very important because your relationship works best when you have an ongoing, intimate conversation. And you must guard and protect it because if you do not, life will squeeze the intimacy out of your face-to-face -face fun. And it happens to all of us. Face-to-face -face fun. You have to create it, and you have to guard it. And you, ha you have to do it or else your, your marriage will suffer. Do you know what I hate to see? And I, and, I, and I look, do you ever look at couples when they're in a restaurant? Do you ever look at couples when they're in a restaurant and they just don't talk to each other? Have you ever seen that? It breaks my heart. They're just sitting there and he's in his soup and she's in her chowder. And, and I look at that and I think, that's sad. I want to talk to my wife. So let me just say for the record, you know, driving your kids to school, sitting together while talking, or watching a show while talking, while you're both playing on your cell phones, that doesn't count. It doesn't. We're talking about consistent, guarded, face-to-face -face time. Take a weekend getaway. Do whatever where you invest that time and have some face-to-face -face fun. The second thing is what I think I would call side-to-side -side fun. All right, everyone say side-to-side. -side. Side. Say it again. Side. Okay, this is where you're hanging out with your best friend. Now, Karen and I are different in, when it comes to friends. Um, I make a lot of friends easily, and she makes some very close friends deeply. All right? But, and I have a lot of friends here. Now, I know it may sound strange, and I'm not trying to blow smoke. Karen's my best friend. I don't know why she would be my best friend, but she is. I drive her absolutely nuts sometimes. I actually had a hush Brian the other day. Hush Brian. She doesn't say that. <laughs> but I was like, oh, she must be tired. <laughs> tired, tired of me. <laughs> When you're doing the side-by-side -side time, you're doing something you enjoy with your wife or your husband. It's enjoying time. It's doing common activities. Verse 11 of chapter 7, the text says, Come, my lover, let's go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. In other words, let's have a weekend getaway. Let's have someone care for the kids. Let's leave the house. Let's just go away and have some fun together. Do you know something? That is something I don't get enough with my wife is time away. I would love to get some time away. Our work schedules don't allow it. Um, and right now with my dad at home, of course, it's, it's even harder. But just three days, two days away means so much to me. I, in fact, that's why one of the things I look forward to every year is the pastor and spouse's retreat. And we do that in North Conway, New Hampshire. Yes, the conferences are nice and they're spiritual and the food is food. But my favorite time is walking up and down the streets of North Conway with my wife. Hands down. Hands down. And it is. She's going to get in the car later and she's going to go, is that true? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Now women, just as women typically crave face-to-face -face time, do you know that men crave more side-to-side -side time? It's when we're just hanging out doing something that they enjoy, that we enjoy. And we want their wife to enjoy it too for some reason. It just makes a man va feel valued and it's fun. And he sees 
you as his very best friend. He may not ever say that, but it's an incredibly bonding experience for you both, especially for the man, I'm going to tell you. I like what one guy said. He says, I always like to be by my wife's side, and I always hold her hand. And he said, I do it for two reasons. Number one, because I love her. Number two, because if I let go, she goes shopping. And that's just... That's a lie. That's not true. I always hold one hand. One thing I loved doing with Karen was sailing. And it wasn't until after I sold the boat until I realized how much she enjoyed it. And I don't know what it would be for you guys. Maybe he wants to play golf. And he wants you to go with him. I don't like golf. It's boring. But you go along... And that does something. Did you know that? It really does. Or he wants you to go hunting. Well, I'd rather go shopping. Well, fine. But you go along, and it does something for him. Or maybe for you, you guys like playing board games together. I play board games. I don't like playing board games. I do it. I don't do it enough. I know I don't. Maybe you go mountain climbing. Maybe a few pounds ago I could do that. I, I might do that again. Or maybe long walks. Or maybe just... In the morning, sitting outside and watching the birds, drinking some tea, having that side-by-side -side time. Do you know there's nothing better than that? It's so important. You ladies, you enter into his world, and you enter, and men, you enter into her world. It's not all about you, and it really isn't. Right, ladies? Right, ladies? You're afraid to say right. Someone give me an amen. It's not all about you guys, but it is about both of you. Here's the thing, ladies. You like for him to talk. You like for him to talk. You like for him to open up. There are two times when man is most likely to open up. And are you ready for this? You might want to write this one down. The first is when he's doing something, when he's doing something with you he enjoys. And the second is right after he's done something with you he enjoys. Take that any way you want told you it's PG. That's good preaching. I don't know how you can just contain yourselves in the middle of such powerful and wonderful fun stuff, but it's true. While romance and physical intimacy should be part of any good marriage, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give some advice to some couples that are maybe struggling in this area. I think it's important that we look at physical intimacy in marriage as a process of growing together. And a lot of marriages need healing in this area from a lot of past baggage. And we don't want to, you know, use that as a cop-out. However, we want to work toward healing and see marriage and physical intimacy as really what it is. And it's holy. And we need to let God renew our minds in the way that we see it and as we grow in Christ and as a way that we minister to one another. Because, yes, there's days when he's tired or she's tired. And there's days we would just rather not and we need to love one another and serve one another and make it a priority in our marriages. And I too often see people that just don't. They don't. And I think it's very harmful to their marriage. So there are three types of fun every married couple that's, should have. And we're going to say them aloud. The first one is this, face to face. Say it. What's the second type? Right. And the third one, if you're ready for this, I told you it was PG. It's belly button to belly button fun. Oh, grow up. Somebody write that down, and now somebody say amen. amen. The women were louder. What happened to the men of Maine? Amen, men? Yes. Fine. Is that clever or what? I mean, I know you're going to remember it. So let me break this belly button to belly button thing down for you. Verse 11 and 12 of chapter 7. This is what the Shulamite woman says to Solomon. She says, come, my lover. Let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let us go early to the vineyards to see if the vines have budded. I'm getting to the fun part. And if their blossoms have opened, and if their pomegranates are in bloom, what then does she say? Somebody help me out. She says, I will give you my love. What does she say? Translated into modern language, she said, hey, let's go have some fun in the park. That's what she's saying. 
That's what she said. Let's go have some fun in the park. Now, don't go have some fun in the park and tell the cop that the pastor told you to. <laughs> don't do that. How silly. Unless it's a really private park. But don't do that. Okay? And here's what she's saying. Let's go. Let's have some belly button to belly button time. Let's have some physical and romantic fun. And you say, does God like that? Oh, yes, he does. He does. And if you don't believe me, look in God's word. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 18 through 20. This is a great verse. May your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice with the wife of your youth. Be married 30 years, 40 years. Enjoy this woman that you married when you were young. A loving doe, a graceful deer. Watch this. May her breasts always satisfy you. This is the word of God. And may he add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen? Okay. Some of you aren't smiling. I don't know what's wrong with you. Did you forget? This is good stuff. This is good. May her breasts always satisfy you. And you may be what? What? I like what it says. It says, may you be, say it out loud, captivated. See it? Right there. May you be captivated by her love. Now, the Hebrew word translated for captivated, you may want to write this down. The Hebrew word for captivated is sugar. <laughs> sugar. Yeah. yeah. Everyone say sugar. You got to say it with some kind of swag to it. Come on. You have to say it with attitude. Sugar. It doesn't work. It's Give me some sugar. Yeah. This is the Hebrew language. And it's the same word that's used that an animal would be used when an animal would kill and attack and eat another animal. May your love be like that. Sugar. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. Kim gets it. She understands what I'm saying. Now, this is good, right? Now, let me give you advice about this because I believe this is one thing. That, I'm getting cracked up. Uh, this is the one thing that I think would be very good for your marriages is to have some physical intimate fun. So let me give you advice to the men and to the women. First of all, men, work on your approach. <laughs> I'm hearing laughter. Vary your approach. Get creative. In, hey, how about this one? Be tender in your approach. Quit just doing the same approach. You know, maybe your approach is like, Hey, you want some of this? Huh? Right? You know, or you check this out. You know, you don't walk out from the shower and you go, hey, hey, check me, you know? No, no, no. You know all that kind of stuff. Don't do that. Work on your approach, you idiot. Okay? I'm sorry. Romance. Conversation. I'm giving clues, okay? Write these down. Bring a gift home. Rub her feet, all right? Work on your approach because, ladies, you know everything, and I mean everything, a husband can make, he can make sexual. He can. She says, can you make me a bowl of cereal? He's like, oh, sure thing. See, it's there already, isn't it? Sure thing, I can make you a bowl of cereal. Give me a spoon, I'll stir it up. Don't worry. Work on your approach, all right? Let's get out of ninth grade. Be loving. Be tender. Ladies, my advice for you is make an approach. Any approach. Please. All right? You want some of this? Listen to me. Get a little romantic. Listen, ladies. Ladies, whatever you've got, it looks better in silk than it does in flannel. Throw that flannel thing away. Get some lingerie. Go on a date, play some music, draw a bath, give a back rub for crying out loud. And if you're from Detroit like me, put on some Marvin Gaye or even better yet, some Smokey Robinson. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You're going, we don't have time for that. We've got little kids. Well, go on, put Dora the Explorer or something on the CD, run into the bedroom, lock the door, have some fun, have some fun. You're single. Remember that. 
This is in preparation, not for now, you single people. So here's the thing. I think there might be a lot of baby dedications nine months from now. I don't know, but that's possible. Okay? Here's the thing. Let me try. Let me just try to get serious for a minute, okay? Just you know, ladies, generally speaking, generally speaking, we all agree. I understand, and not always, but generally speaking, most men desire physical intimacy more than women. Agreed? A little bit? Huh? Let me, let's say it again. Because you're looking at me like you don't agree. But generally speaking, most men desire physical intimacy more often than women. Agreed? Okay, okay, all right. Last. Ladies, you need to understand in marriage, and this is so important, that when you turn off and constantly reject your husband, this is a crisis for him. It is the equivalent of the emotional distress that you would face when there's silence and no emotional intimacy. It is a crisis. And one of the greatest ways that we can love each other is by just coming together, together, renewing the covenant, which is sex. And it is a spiritual thing before anything else. It is a picture of two becoming one and ministering to one another. It is, I think, a blessing from God. And it's one way, just one way you serve each other. Okay, ladies, you need to realize that. And it's the truth. Men, don't go home and quote. Ladies, just remember what I said. And I'll tell you why. Because if he, we're sexual beings, we are. If he's not getting his sexual need, needs met, he has no other legitimate option but you. Because everything else is sinful. You are his only legitimate outlet for sexual fulfillment. And one of the greatest things that you can do for each other is to engage in frequent and creative and spiritual lovemaking. It is a gift. And it is honoring to God and it renews the covenant. Now, what some of you are going to say is, well, he's a jerk and I don't like him and I don't like you for telling me to have sex with him or whatever. Listen to me. I understand that. But do you know that feelings follow actions? You start doing what you once did and you'll get what you once had. Amen. What are you going to do? If you want what you once had, go do what you once did. And I, Now, this isn't just about sex. This is about everything in your relationship with your wife. You got married because you have fun. Start having fun again. Okay? We're going to seek God. We're going to pursue the one with our two. We're going to fight fair. And my goodness, you had fun at one time, and you can have fun again. Get creative. Make it a priority. But I don't like it. But there's this guy at work who meets my emotional needs. That's what she's saying. And he looks so much better. Oh, and this girl at the gym, she seems so much more fun. Listen to me. If the grass is greener somewhere else, it's time to water your own yard. Go pack. Get it in the car. Invest in that marriage that God has given you and enjoy your life with the wife that God has blessed you with. And if you think the distance between here and there is too far of a distance to travel, remember with God all things are possible. And we will continue to seek him and believe that he will give us what he wants us to have if we do what's right and we honor him from this day forward. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would minister life. God, I know that so often we get busy and we forget to even enjoy your goodness and the presence and blessings of the relationships. God, forgive us for neglecting to praise you and enjoy all of the gifts that you've given us. Now, eyes are closed, heads are bowed. As you pray today, I want you to think about life in general. I don't know about you, but so often I get way too serious and I get caught up in all the business of life and I forget that the Bible says this 
is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Let us acknowledge the goodness of God. Now, I don't know what it would be for you. Maybe, maybe you could be thankful that you've got health or that you've got friendships or you've got a roof over your head or that you've got a job or for years and years you felt lonely and you wanted to be married and now you're married and you can thank God that he brought you someone or that he brought you children and yet you've been too busy to enjoy some of God's blessings. And today, you just want to repent and say, I really do. I want to see his goodness everywhere. I want to have some fun. Some of you in your marriages, life has happened. You're like us. We, we made that a priority, and then we let it slip back, and we had to bring it back. And you need to recommit today. Yes, God, I commit to enjoy this gift with my spouse. For some of you, you've neglected some of the enjoyment that God may want you to have, and you just want his goodness everywhere. If I've touched on any subjects this morning, and you would just like God to minister to your heart in these areas, would you just lift your hands right now? Amen. I see hands going up. Amen. Come on, marriages. You've neglected them. Have some fun. You've had fun before. You want to have it again? Someone else? Anyone else? Just lift your hands, and I'm going to be praying for you. Amen. Amen. Good. Together, that's us. God, thank you today for opening our eyes to something that may seem light on the surface, but it's really deep at its root. God, you want us to enjoy life and with those around us and to see your goodness. And I pray for marriages, especially for those that raised their hands. Lord, I know that they fell in love having fun. I pray, God, that they would fall in love all over again with a new season of fun. And God, God, if, if, if they want what they once had, I pray that they would do what they once did and they would pursue you, God, that they would enjoy the blessings that you have given them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. More to think about, I hope. Have a great day. See you next week. All right, so there you go. There was our PG service of how to have fun. If you're ever in the Skowhegan area, we would love to have you join us for a morning worship. They take place every Sunday at 10 a.m., and we're located at 31 East Madison Road in Skowhegan, Maine. Our telephone number is 207-474-2957, and our website is nhccskowhegan.org. Well, until next time, God bless you, and we'll see you later.